Ladies and gentlemen, I'm warmly welcome you on one of the Aviation Hub Conference presentation called Airports from the Perspective of Theoretician and Practitioner. I decided to show you at the beginning the landing on one of the most tough airports located in Skiatos in Greece due to short runway and sea from each side. Before I start, I would like to introduce myself. Thank you, Paulina, for introducing me. Um, my name is Jakub Czołek, and I'm the employee of Jeppesen Boeing Company. I'm a holder of three faculties, Public Health on Medical University of Gdansk, International Relation of Specialization of Diplomacy on Collegium Civitas in Warsaw, and Law on European, Union, uh, Union, uh, European University of Law and Administration in Brussels and Warsaw. Last year, I graduated as well a Master in Business Study, but Many people ask me why, they are, why do I work uh, in aviation if I graduated three different faculties. The answer is simple. That's my passion. Even if I haven't had any aviation background, I decided to start my journey in one of the handling companies at the Gdańsk Lech Airport as general aviation and VIP agent to become, after four years, expert in this field. I hope you will enjoy my presentation. And if you have any question, please use chat box. Let's start. The agenda for today is simple, however, includes many examples and movies. First of all, I would like to tell some theory, such as definition of aerodrome, why aerodrome and not airport, I will explain in one moment. Then I will present the types of aerodrome, elements of aerodrome, and show and clarify few most dangerous, biggest, and interesting airports, in my opinion. And I wish you to share your expression with me. After whole theory, it will be a time to explain what kind of services you can expect on the airport, show you the passenger path and the baggage flow, demonstrate what turnaround is. At the end, uh, I'm going to cover the area of new technologies around the aviation sector, bringing closer the system, which helps pilots, airlines, handlers, and uh, airport authorities in their everyday job. Mm, so let's move to the, to the first point. An aerodrome is a location from which aircraft flight operation take place, regardless of whether they involve air cargo, passenger, or neither. In former ten, ten, terminology, as defined by International Civil Aviation Organization, an aerodrome is a defined area on land or water, including any buildings, installations, and equipment intended to be used either wholly or in part for the arrival, departure, or surface movement of aircraft. So the term airport may imply a certain structure. Having satisfied certain certification criteria or regulatory requirements that not all aerodromes may have achieved. That means all airports are aerodromes, but not all aerodromes are airports. Moving on to the uh, types of uh, aerodromes, the first of them is, as I mentioned, airport. Uh, in colloquial use in certain environments, the terms airport and aerodrome are often interchanged. However, in general, the term airport may imply or confer a certain stature upon the aviation facility that other aerodromes may not have achieved. In some jurisdictions, airport is a legal term of art reserved exclusively for those aerodromes certified or licensed as airport by the relevant National Aviation Authority after meeting specified certification criteria or regulatory requirements. Then we have airbase. An airbase is an aerodrome with the significant uh, facilities to support aircraft and crew. The term is usually reserved for military bases, but also applies to civil seaplanes bases. Next on the list is airstrip. An airstrip is a small aerodrome that consists only uh, of a runway with perhaps fueling equipment. They are generally in remote location. A few airstrips grew to become full-fledged airbases, a strategic or economic importance of a region increased over time. The last one, but not the least, is water aerodrome. A water aerodrome or seaplane base is an area of open water used regularly by seaplanes, float planes, and amphibious aircraft for landing or takeoffing. It may have a terminal building on the land or end, a place where the plane can come to shore and dock like a boat to unload or load. Some are collocated with a land-based airport and are certified airports in their own right. For example, um, 
did, that means that Vancouver International Water Airport and Vancouver International Airport is a certified airport because it includes water aerodrome and the airport. Let's come turn now to the map of airports distribution around the world. It is the 12 years old map. However, I love this image and I wanted to share with you. It contains 3,000, uh, 4,381 4, airports, each marked by a red dot. Uh, this map, uh, this base map is NASA blue marble. But I have as well more fresh data than from 2008. According to the Airport Council International World Airport Traffic Report from 2015, there are 17,678 commercial airports in the world. In other words, those which receive airliners, cargo, and business aircrafts. Moving on to the next part of my presentation, I will present you examples of airports worth attention. The most extreme, Lukla Airport in Eastern Nepal. Lukla is one of the highest airports in the world, uh, 9,500 feet above uh, sea level, and pilots have to deal here with the challenges of changing weather conditions. The extremely short runway is located between a mountain wall and a cliff, not allowing any government maneuver in case of any emergency. Moreover, lack of the lights and air control means pilots must really solely on their own experience. All of this together creates a sense of uncertainty when it comes to flights here at the airport in the high Himalayas. The length of the runway is only 70, 29 feet, when an average of 6,000 feet is ideal for most places. So with such a short runway, the Tanzing Hillary Airport can only entertain light aircrafts. This unique airport is known to remain closed from mid to late morning due to the strong southwest winds. Only very qualified pilots who have at least 100 successful short takeoff and landing experience are authorized to operate there. These pilots must also have one year of sh short takeoff and landing experience in Nepal, and furthermore, uh, should have completed 10 flights in Tolukla, accompanied by a certificate pilot. The next one is Para International in Bhutan. It's the second example of an extreme uh, airport. The pictures show how complicated the approach is. Very few pilots are certified to land at this airport and not without a reason. Firstly, there is no radar to guide planes into the airport. The pilot needs to fly entirely on manual mode according to procedure for landing that have been designed by experienced pilot and aircraft manufacturers. This specify at which speed and altitude the aircraft needs to be a specific visual landmark checkpoints as the pilots make their approach. For these reasons, Flights are only allowed during daylight and under good visibility and can often be diverted to the due to the clouds. As if being able to check the visual of landmarks and the runway wasn't enough, the pilot also needs to watch out the, um, for the electrical poles and hose roofs on the hillside as they maneuver between the mountains at 45 degree angle before dropping quickly onto the runway. As you can see on the pictures, these two airports are also characteristic due to their location and gradient. Courcheval Airport in France and uh, Banga Airport in Congo are very known due to their specific surroundings and short runways. Both of them situated high in the mountains with an ex impressive gradient of 90% and 30%. Too fast or too slow could risk falling into the cliff or crashing into the fall snow in Courcheval, which actually happened in 2019. The next category is the size. Daxing International Airport, officially opened in late September 2019, is Beijing and the world's largest airport terminal, spanning 7.0 million square feet, the equivalent of 98 soccer fields. With the runways and annexes, its whole surface covers 80 square miles. It costs eight, um, $11, um, $11 billion 
to build, and it's slated to handle 300 takeoffs and landing without an hour in its initial stage alone. Next examples refers to weather condition. Moving on to Antarctica, the ice runway serves the McMurdo research station and technically lies in the open sea above an expanse of ice. It is constructed yearly at the start of the Antarctic winter and used until November when the rising temperatures begin to melt the ice. However, when locating a runway is in the desert or extremely cold places, the lower air density can seriously reduce the performance of a plane's engines. Now, I would like to introduce you to a few elements of the airports. Let's start with the longest part, a runway. Runway is a paved land strip on which landing and takeoff operations take place. It is in leveled position without any obstructions on it. Special markings are made on the runway to differ it from the normal roadways or highways. Similarly, after sunset, specially provided lighting help pilots in safe landing. There could be one runway or more in different uh, configuration. Taxiway is path which connects each end of the uh, runway with terminal area, apron, hangar, etc. On most airports, they are laid on angle of 30 degrees to the runway to let the aircraft leave the runway quickly after landing. Then we have apron. Apron with parking stands. Those are areas used to parking, loading, and unloading uh, the aircraft. It is generally located in front of terminal buildings or hangars. Terminal building is a place where all administration facilities are located. About the terminal building, I will tell you more in a few minutes. Afterwards, we have buildings for authorized staff only. Hangar a place where the aircraft is repaired or serviced, or uh, as well, control tower. There is a place where aircraft under a particle zone is controlled whether they are on land or in the air. Uh, many people say that control tower is like nerve system of an airport. Airports are divided into land site and air site areas. The land site area is open to the public while access to the airside area is tightly controlled. Uh, the airside area includes all parts of the airport around the aircraft and the parts of the building that are accessible only to passenger and staff. Passengers and staff must be checked by security before permitted to enter the airside area. On the graph, you can see our closest airport, Gdansk Lech Walesa Airport. Um, but on each airport, there are few essential facilities passenger. On the part, there is check-in facilities, including a baggage drop-off, security clearance gates, passport control, gates, waiting areas. And on arrival, we have passport control, baggage reclaim facilities, um, customs, um, and uh, landside meeting places. For both sets of passenger, um, there must be a link between for be, between the passenger facilities and the aircraft, such as uh, jet bridges or airsters. There are also needed to be a baggage handling system to transport baggage from the baggage drop off to the parking planes, uh, planes and from arriving planes to the baggage reclaim. Besides that, there is many extra facilities on the airport. You can buy something in duty-free stores, eat, drink something in restaurant, coffee shops, send an email by post, rent a car, buy a holidays from tour operators, or use VIP service to have a quiet area only for themselves. Some of the big airports have as well hairdresser, beauty centers, hotel inside uh, the terminal building, etc. Now um, you will see the passenger path according to essential facilities for passenger mentioned before, which I think a lot of you knows. Um, when the passenger comes to the airport, he or she should leave their baggage on check-in counter. They collect their boarding cards after checking all necessary information, uh, such as scanning API by ground handler. When she or he has their handbag and ID passport with boarding card, they can go to the next point, which is security. They are checking um, in the passengers 
checking if the passengers is free from prohibited items. And after this screening, the passenger has time to go for shopping or to, to eat something in restaurants. Um, and the last stop before going to the plane is a gate where passengers scan their boarding card. And after that, they are allowed to go to the plane. When passenger leaves their baggage at check-in counter, the baggage has their own path to go to the plane. It is similar to passenger, but the baggage screen is screening by security on the belts. Then it's sorted by the system. Each trolley has programmed to throw it out the baggage on shot. Um, and employees who sorting the baggage check one more time uh, if that's good destination label has and put it on the loading trolley. Why it is so important? Again, IATA, uh, International Air Transport Association, has announced a new baggage tracking resolution, resolution number 753, for all members to implement by June 2018. The purpose of the resolution is to prevent and reduce uh, baggage fraud, uh, enable the detection of exemptions, speed up reconciliation, measure SLA compliance, and provide evidence to an automatic pro-rotation process. Resolution 753 makes it mandatory to track baggage when the bag is acquired from the passenger, delivered to the aircraft, at custody changes between carriers, at, uh, and at delivery to the passenger. Now, uh, I would like to present to you one of the systems which helps with uh, baggage tracking and handling. Uh, and in the near future, as I think it will be obligatory, Michal mentions about RFID on his presentation. So take a look for this video. Good morning. This is a bag tag, but let's take a closer look. You see this chip here? That's at the center of this new baggage tracking system. It's kind of like luggage low jack. And while it does double the cost of the bag tags to around nine cents a piece, it has the potential to save airlines up to three billion dollars over the next seven years. What's inside this bag tag could change the airline industry and help guarantee your luggage doesn't get lost. Delta is the first U.S. carrier to replace traditional paper tags with a radio frequency identification or RFID chip. The new $50 million system now allows nearly real-time tracking of every checked bag. We are changing the game with bag handling performance. Bill Lenz is a senior vice president at Delta. We believe this has already had a 5 to 10 percent reduction on the number of mishandled bags that we have in our system. Once a bag is tagged, sensors track it throughout the journey from the ticket counter to the bag room to the tarmac. And if this light turns red, that means the bag should not be on this flight and it stops the loading process. Victor DeRosa is a baggage handler. It takes out some of that margin of error. Absolutely, because we're all human. And so it does for a variety of reasons, whether you changed your itinerary, uh, whether you decided not to go, or whether we were just thinking about something else and not paying attention to that specific bag tag, it catches it for us. There is a reason Delta is spending millions of dollars to implement this new system. Every time a bag is mishandled or lost can cost the airline $100 or more. Starting today, passengers will get push alert updates like these on their smartphones. From the app, they can pull up a map tracking a bag's location. In the meantime, when passengers are doing shopping, eating, um, the planes land um, and it starts turn around of this aircraft. I will show you um, the quick movie of SAS um, turnaround and explain step by step what's uh, what, what should we do um, um, between um, the boarding and the boarding of the passengers. Firstly, as you see, aircraft taxiing into its parking position. After landing, the aeroplane should move to its assigned parking position. Once there, it will be immobilized and marked off the safety cons by the operator in charge of, in charge of ground handling. Then is uh, disembarkation of passenger and crew. Passenger will then leave the aircraft through the established door, normally through just one of them, to access the gateway 
or buses that they will take them to the main terminal. After that, um, there is a cabin cleaning. Uh, as the passenger leave the aircraft through one of the door, the professional in charge of cleaning uh, the cabin will enter through the other an, another door uh, to remove rubbish, sanitize the bathrooms, and replace the um, replace the the other things. In the meantime, is loading and ram handling. Uh, at this point, the operators in charge of loading and ram handling come into action. Baggage and goods will be unloaded and transported to the respective baggage carousel and warehouses. After that, um, airline and uh, aeroplane inspection uh, as a standard operating uh, procedure manual um, itself determines the safety technical check routine to be followed during the turnaround time to verify that the aircraft is in good condition to fly. Um, there is as well airplane refueling. Uh, the aircraft tanks must also be filled with the necessary fuel to ensure that it arrives safely to the next destination. Catering. Uh, meanwhile, the catering service will provide food and beverages uh, for passengers of the new route. Um, then it's the loading of suitcase and goods after the hold, uh, aircraft hold. Um, has been uh, emptied and um, the handling agents refill it with the baggage and cargo for the next flight. Um, after that, there is a passenger boarding. Um, while the handling service has been completely all of these previous tasks, the crew and pilot have to focus on confirming the road details and the number of passenger, as well as carrying out their own security checks inside the aircraft. And the last but not least, towing um, the air aircraft to the start of the runway. Uh, finally, uh, and often helped by pushback trailer, the aircraft uh, will leave its parking position to prepare commands the taxi maneuver in order to access the takeoff runway. Um, all those systems mentioned on previous slides would not work uh, alone without connection with programs dedicated to passengers strictly, plus flight uh, management system, and of course, integral programs in every aircraft. For example, uh, we have the Altia. Uh, this is the main program dedicated passenger used during check-in on to printing boarding cards, changing the seats, um, baggage printing the, the baggage tax and uh, as well it's used um, during the boarding. Uh, on the right hand side you have the um, Avionica is one of the um, program to, to, check, to check weight and balance of the aircraft as well as to preparing the load sheets. Uh, the another one uh, which you can see on uh, Gdańsk airport it's GMT uh, program called Inflot. It follows all arriving and departing aircraft, and also um, we can receive and send all important message, su uh, such as LDM, PSM, or movement to the another airports. Um, the next one is ACARS. It is similar to CPDLC about which spoke Mateusz yesterday. However, this system allows transmission of short messages between aircraft and ground station via airbrand radio or satellite. Uh, for example, about the fueling or unexpected situation on board during the flight. And the last one, it's CFMU Eurocontrol, it's Central Flow Management Unit. Uh, that system show all flight plans which are accepted. It is important, for example, to, to know the flight level or alternate airport for, for each flight to provide the weather for a crew. Right now, um, I would like to pay more attention uh, to the product that puts together cases described earlier from all parts of the airport through hazards and latest information. It's um, the Jeppesen Airport Moving Map uh, application, uh, and it helps orient the flight crew to the aircraft's position on the ground in relation to runways, taxiways, and airport structures without reference to paper charts. AMM improves safety and operational efficiency margins uh, through increased position awareness and reduced flight crew roll load. Um, airport moving uh, maps are derived from satellite imagery and are georeferenced for highly accurate uh, representation of the airport surface.
you can ask how does it work. Um, when the aircraft is on the ground, uh, the Jepson AAM application autoloads the appropriate uh, airport taxi map based on location as determined by input from the aircraft FMC or GPS signal. With the touch of the button, the pilot can search and select available AAM maps, uh, displaying on ship position on a moving map for tactical operation, including taxi, zoom in or out on a taxi uh, way map. Uh, and as well, view the AMM map uh, in Northup stationary mode for planning. All of this information is coded by a group of analysts from Global Navigation Services uh, Department in Jepson. On this AMM uh, from Gdańsk Airports, uh, as you see, current map downloaded yesterday, uh, you can see the parking stand numbers, taxiways, runways, terminal buildings, and also construction works which are marked with the red polygon uh, in the left top corner. Uh, this is uh, the new pier, uh, which is already um, in, in constructions and will be open in 2021. So this is not that our colleagues once upload the map and it works. Uh, each supplement, NOTAM or AAC, are also implemented to the airport moving maps. Especially you can see it when you would like to have more information about the hotspots or the one ways. In Jepson, there is another group or qualified analyst who is marking airport smart notes dedicated to each part of the airport. Those informations are updated with new source releases. Um, I checked as well on the website um, to find more information about airport moving maps. And one of our customers wrote an article highlighting eight reasons why you should use airport moving maps. First one, taxiway and runway closures. AMM charts automatically synchronizing with NOTAMs to shade close taxiways and runways in red marking it much easier to visualize their route. Second, dynamic rendering. Runways, taxiways, stop bars, and all the airport structures are rendered dynamically as you zoom in or, on, or zoom out of the chart. No more cluttered signage and impossible small letters from static charts. Third one, it's detailed hotspots and holding position. You can zoom in and out on hotspots and click them to see details. Holding position are depicted clearly as well. The fourth one, it's on ship. Uh, just like your Enroute ma uh, maps and route charts, uh, if on ship and GPS are available on your EFB, you can see your position in real time as your taxi around the airport. Fifth one uh, is the highlights and uh, notation. You can use the highlighter on the AMM taxi chart to highlight your taxi route and, and add notes. Uh, when uh, the next one is the gate position, if you are flying, for example, for, for an airline, you can see as well the gate position right on the chart. Uh, the seventh one uh, is the toggle between north up and or, or track up. If you want to just taxi like you'd follow in the GPS in your car, you can toggle track up. And the last one is detailed runway information. Tap on the runway to get all the information you needed, like available distances for takeoff and landing, visual depiction, or approach planting and many, many more. To illustrate my point, I will show you the promo movie of this product. Jeppesen's airport maps reduce pilot workload through its clear, crisp, easy to navigate interactive map, which combines information formerly found on various static airport, taxi, or parking stand charts. This information is available when and where pilots need it on a single data-driven map. Jeppesen's airport maps improves pilot situational awareness through an own ship symbol depicted on a single data-driven map. Pilots immediately know exactly where they are in proximity to hotspots, runways, and other airport structures to reduce the likelihood of taxiway delays and runway incursions. Human factor studies have found that pilots using Jeppesen airport maps require fewer unassigned stops than those using traditional static airport charts. Fewer unassigned stops means shorter taxi times and less fuel burn, resulting in real savings for your airline. 
reduced pilot stress levels, improved situational awareness, increased passenger safety, and shorter taxi times. Four good reasons for your airline to consider Jeppesen Airport Maps. Contact your Jeppesen account manager to find out more. Jeppesen's Airport Maps, so much more than just charts. To sum up, I think there is more and more new airports and airlines pretending to be more modern. As I think, and I think you too, there is only one thing that can help uh, with that. It's new technologies, which make the work easier for crews, ground handling agents and airport facilities, especially due to, to time management, because everyone knows that time is money. Thank you very much for your uh, presence, and I'm ask, uh, and I'm waiting for your questions. Uh, thank you so much, Kuba, for for your presentation. Uh, I have received one question during um, during the presentation. I didn't want to interrupt you. Uh, the photo in your presentation under airport uh, that's on slide fifth or sixth, I guess. Uh, which which airport is that? Uh, could you tell me um, one? Can you, maybe you one can moment. share your presentation yeah. with us. Yeah, I, I will. I will share one more time. Mm -hmm. Let's see the slide one fifth moment. or sixth, and uh, Monica, if you can tell us which one, uh, which one you were talking about. Mm -hmm. Take your time. Okay, we can see your screen. It's that one. Uh, Monica, are, are, if you're still with us, can you tell us if you meant this, this slide? Uh, she said photo of the airport. So maybe of the cool. airports, yeah. so I don't think so. It will be that one, maybe. The first one, it's Korshevel. Okay. And uh, another one on the right side, it's Banga. Mm -hmm. uh, or maybe she is thinking about uh, Mika was talking that about one. Flight, uh, the airport on slide fifth or sixth. So I think it's uh, it should be uh, before that. So maybe that one. On the left side, there is a Courchevel airport in France. And on the um, right side, you have the Banga in Congo. OK, uh, Kuba, can you actually go back to the fifth slide? That one? Uh, no, before. Oh, uh, Monica, do you mean this one? I guess. Do you know what airport this is? No. She's saying that, that one, it's Lukla Airport. <laughs> mm -hmm. And the, before that, <laughs> let's try to find the correct one. Uh, the, the, yeah, sure. The uh, slide before. Before, yeah. Now the previous one. That one. <laughs> uh, um, I guess not. Okay, you, you know what? I think we can go back to, uh, we can go back to it uh, at the end. Um, yeah, so maybe let's move to, to another question. Um, sure. A question from Nazine, actually, how many of these airports you have been to? Uh, <laughs> um, uh, actually, I haven't got a chance to visit those airports yet. <laughs> Hope to travel to Courchevel when uh, COVID-19 ends. Uh, besides those, I've been to many airports, for example, in the United States, uh, Thailand, India, and all over uh, the Europe. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite is the one in Larnaca uh, on Cyprus, uh, because it's location near to the Mediterranean Sea. Um, and you can see um, landing aircraft, uh, aircraft laying on the beach. As well as it was funny situation when we uh, when we come back with my uh, wife and my friends that... Um, 
it was a new route from, from Gdańsk to Larnaca and back. And uh, they didn't know how to say Gdańsk uh, in English. So I need to help them to, to create the, the um, uh, information about the last passenger as well to put the Gdańsk uh, as, a, as a word to, the, to, this, um, to this speak. Okay. Um, another question, Kuba, uh, how often it happens that a passenger does not fly uh, despite having a ticket? Um, it's a good question because um, I think that each day has uh, this kind of passenger that, that, that doesn't fly. Uh, because they have a problem with a visa, they have a problem with uh, exemplary doc documents, for example, passport or ID. Uh, they are drunk. <laughs> um, but as well, um, in this COVID-19 times, uh, the passengers forgot to, um, to create additional profile on uh, national agencies. For example, in Greece and in Cyprus, uh, there is uh, obligatory that you need, before um, going to the airport, you need to create a profile that you don't have a COVID-19 uh, disease. So um, yeah, there is a lot of people. Uh, once um, I counted and it was around 15 per one day. Okay, thank you. Uh, and another question, can you explain some things, symbols used from airport approach chart maps? I think it, uh, it's the, the question from Adam about the charts on Bhutan, one of the Bhutan airports. Um, I'm, not the, I'm not the charter, <laughs> I'm, I'm working as an Android uh, coder. So um, maybe I, I can explain something more in Q&A session when I will get uh, some more details from my colleague from uh, approach uh, charting or approach uh, coding um, analysis okay. group. Okay, sure. I will send you this question and then we can circle back on the open uh, Q&A session. Thank you. Uh, so maybe a few more questions because um, you've been showing us the, uh, the turnaround process. Uh, maybe I didn't catch it, but uh, did you say something about how long does the turnaround actually take? I forgot to mention about it. Um, it depends on airlines uh, because it's, uh, it's in grant handling manual document. Uh, that means that each type of aircraft has another time of turnaround. For example, for Ryanair, uh, which uh, they are flying on 737-800, the turnaround process is taking 25 minutes from the landing to the closing door after boarding. Uh, for the Weezer, uh, Airbus uh, 320, it's 30 minutes and 40 minutes for, uh, for the biggest one, Airbus 321. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, guys, if you have any other questions, please send them uh, on the chat box. And uh, right now I have two more questions go back to you from the backstage. Uh, first one, uh, what is the highest altitude airport in the world and the lowest altitude? Um, I thought that this question could be <laughs> on this presentation. Um, so the highest altitude airport is located at four, 1,411 meters above sea level in Sichuan province in China and calls Doacheng Yading Airport. But um, the lowest altitude airport uh, is located um, at 378 meters below mean sea level in Israel and calls Bar Yehuda Airfield. So, okay, great, thank you. So I assume it's a uh... It's a pretty big challenge for the pilots to actually land on uh, this kind of airports. Would you agree? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, okay. And one more question: uh, the naming of the runway. Who gives the runway number, and where uh, where does it come from? So um, the runway designator consists of two digit number, which is the whole number nearest to the one tenth of the magnetic north uh, when viewed from the direction of approach. For example, if the azimuth of the center line is uh, 293, uh, then the runway designator will be uh, 29. If the runway center line azimuth is 63, the designation uh, for that will be uh, 06. 
Um, the curiosity is that uh, north-oriented uh, runways are designated 36, uh, not 00. And of course, there is uh, parallel runways with the um, same designator. So uh, you should adding the letter L as left, C as central, and R as right. Um, the most interesting fact is that uh, on Greenland, um, there is an airport, Tula, which uses uh, runway 08T, uh, which uh, means that this location is too close to magnetic North Pole, and they use true heading. Okay, thank you so much, Kuba. Uh, I don't see any more questions. Oh, there is one more question. Uh, are there any airport naming superstitions? Um, huh. <laughs> Good question. Um, there are, but I need to uh, find it. So in Q&A session, uh, I will answer this question. Sure, sure, no problem. We can circle back as well. So I will, uh, I will send you the, this question. Okay, guys, if there are no more questions to Kuba, uh, Kuba, I am inviting you, of course, to the Q&A session at 3.30. Oh, Adam actually has one more question. So, uh, so one more, Kuba. Uh, where, was the, where was that approach at opening videos? Uh, Madeira uh, Funchal? It's, it wasn't the Madeira Funchal. It was the Skiatos in Greece. Uh, mm -hmm. It's one of the, as I told you at the beginning, it's one of the um, toughest uh, approach for landing because uh, from each side of the runway there is a sea and the runway is very, very short. Okay, okay, thank you. Um, okay, and once again, I don't see any more, uh, any more questions. In